A clump of thick dark mud, flung from the boy's clenched fist, exploded wetly against my cheek. Some of it dropped down to my chest, smearing into the blue silk. Most of it hurtled into my open, shocked mouth. I choked and gagged, and by some awful reflex, swallowed some of the mud down. The taste was warm, earthy, fecal. No! Suddenly I couldn't catch my breath. I leaned out of the carriage, retching. My hair, already loosed from its intricate coils, hung like ropes before my face as I coughed and gasped, my lungs heaving, my stomach twisting into knots. That wretched boy had flung manure at me. My tongue felt coated with it as I spit again and again into the dirt. When I looked up through streaming eyes, he was still standing there, as motionless as a post. His defiant gaze never left my face, even as my father's guard rushed toward him, their bill hooks raised. Abra reached him first and grabbed him by the throat. He drew his sword from his belt and lifted it high above his head. In another instant, he'd split the boy in half right down to his groin. Stop, I yelled. Do not harm him. Wiping my tear-streaked face, I tried to sit up straight, tried to summon the imperious attitude I'd been trained to exhibit regardless of circumstances. I had been humiliated and rage flooded through me, but my anger was accompanied by something else. As the boy stared at me so boldly, I felt a flicker of admiration, because obviously he feared nothing. Princess, Otto said, handing me a cloth. As I wiped my face clean as best I could, I kept my eyes locked on the boy's. His face was fierce, darkly handsome, and in its own way almost regal. He didn't struggle in Abra's grip. He merely waited, watching me. I could tell that he knew the punishment for what he'd done. Were my father here, he'd already be dead. But my father wasn't here. Abra's sword hung in the air. His arm trembled so badly did he want to bring the blade down and cleave the boy in two. Lower your weapon, Abra, I commanded. Abra's face grew sullen. He hesitated, but he did as I told him to do. He released the boy's throat, and I could see the bruises blossoming already. What is your name, stupid boy? I shouted. He flung back his shoulders and raised his strong chin. I am Raphael and proud of it. Why have you done this to me, you insolent beast? I heard my father's harsh words echo in mine and shargoned. I lowered my voice. Defend yourself, villager, I muttered. It is a lesson. Raphael answered boldly. In subjects your tutors will never teach you about. Suffering and degradation. You live in comfort and luxury in your castle on a hill, and you have no idea what it's like to be down here in the village. Here we live in hunger and squalor and shit. Then he smiled. You've never known hunger or squalor, I'm sure, but now I expect you to understand the shit part. His defiance shook me. No one had ever spoken to me like that, not least a subject I could have skinned alive if I choose. I don't need any lessons from the likes of you, I hissed. Though he was now held captive between two men who'd rather kill him than watch him draw one more breath, Raphael managed to stagger a few steps toward me as he spoke. I not so humbly beg to differ, he said. Everyone must learn suffering, princess, even you. Those mighty abandoned walls can't keep it out forever. I hope Ares and his knights destroy your towering castle. I pray for the quick. No, make that slow demise of your father, the so-called warrior king. Then he spat upon the ground. That was all it took. Abra's sword had been sheathed, but there was no stopping his fists. He cut the boy a vicious blow across the cheek, nearly spinning him around like a top. Stunned, the boy wobbled and reached out, grabbing onto Abra's arm so he didn't crumple to the ground. He would have been wiser to fall. Abra struck him again, and more guards rushed to surround them. The villagers surged forward, and I could no longer see Raphael at all. Otto, don't let them kill him, I cried. Grimly, Otto spurred his horse into the melee, shouting something I could not make out. The villagers fell back and the guards stepped away. I saw the boy's crumpled form laying half buried in the mud. One of his boots was missing and his bare foot looked impossibly small and fragile. 
After another word from Otto, the guards began to drag him away. I could not make out his face, but I could tell there was no life in his limbs. Had they killed him already? Otto rode back to the carriage and answered the question I hadn't even asked out loud. The villager lives, he said, for the time being anyway. A guard slung Raphael onto the back of a horse like a sack of grain, and then they galloped away. What he'd said and done was treasonous and an outrage, yes, but he didn't deserve to die by our hands. There were enough ways for him to perish without us being involved, in a battle with Ares's men or by the fever of the seep. The threat of death hung in the air as thick as curling black smoke. Your Highness, Otto said, we must leave now. But instead I flung open the carriage door and I hesitated only an instant before jumping out among the beasts.